Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of CAF's Heroes of Sport. My name is Bob Babbitt, co-founder of the Challenge Athletes Foundation, and this is our road to Tokyo. Our next guest, Trenton Merrill, who is the long jump American record holder for his category. How you doing, Trenton? I'm doing great, man. Stoked to be here. And you had your road to Rio and went down. What was the Rio experience like in 2016? Uh, it was it was awesome. I had a great time. Um, it was really cool to experience like the whole world in a in a village. Yeah. So that was really cool. Uh, Rio was really beautiful, and I had an amazing time competing in a stadium. And fourth place. Yeah. Uh, that's always a toughie. And what did you say? Twenty centimeters out of the bronze. Yeah, just about. Right. So this time, obviously, you've got a little revenge on your mind. I do. I do. I've been training hard for, this is five years now because with the delay. So yes. yeah, absolutely. So take me back. And so growing up, running, cycling, what were your sports? Soccer, motocross, baseball, hockey. I pretty I played most sports growing up. Yeah. Um, but my main ones were soccer and motocross. Okay. And, yeah. and you were injured when? In 2005. And what happened? I was hit by a car crossing the street with my best buddy. We didn't see this car coming, and as we were crossing, boom, out of nowhere, a BMW came. I just saw it in the flash, like just a flash instant. I saw it in the corner of my eye, and uh, my foot got crushed between a BMW and the little dirt bike we were on, and the uh, doctors tried to save it for about a month and a half, Yeah. and then finally came to me and said, we need to amputate it because we can't save your foot. And obviously, as an active kid who did everything, what, how did it change your world? Oh man, I was crying when I first found out and I just remember like bawling and then I just felt like God tell me like I got great plans for you and so I just I had nothing else like at that time to like kind of lean on or um, uh, that was the one thing that that kind of helped me um, just be okay with it and uh, so I, I just wiped my tears away and I, I just kind of had this like trust uh, that there was still purpose in mind for my life, even though I thought my dreams of being a professional athlete were gone right. and taken away. And, um, and then also other people started visiting me. Like uh, there was a Marine that came in and he was an amputee. Yes. And he came and talked to me and I just started asking him all these questions like, you know, can you still run? Uh, do you still ride motorcycles? Uh, do you have a girlfriend? Like anything I could think of that a 14 year old might be wondering or insecure about. And he was helped me kind of find my identity in that, that short amount of time that he came to the hospital. And when did you find sport again? I went right back into sports as soon as I could start jogging. So I started playing sports with my friends later that spring and summer. And then that next school year, my sophomore year in high school, I joined the volleyball team again. And then I went back into racing motocross. Oh, so you were racing motocross, and yeah. now were you using just a regular uh, everyday leg? Yeah, I was, yep. And when did you finally get a, a running leg, and what type of difference did that make? Yeah, I didn't get a running leg until I was in community college, and my thought process at the time was I could run fast with an everyday leg, and I didn't, I didn't see the need for it because I hadn't joined a track and field team. And once I went to my first CAF event, it was an Oster CAF event in Irvine. Yes. And I saw running blades and then I met uh, some Paralympians there. And then I met uh, Coach Cruz there as well, who was the head uh, coach for the Paralympics. And um, once I got introduced to Paralympics, I saw the, the difference of, you know, a running blade versus an everyday blade. And I was like, all right, I need to get one of these and see what it's all about. And so uh, it was, I think my freshman or sophomore year in community college that I finally got one and then I joined the track team. And when did you realize that long jump was your was your gig? Um, that's it. I don't think it it didn't click till later, but it was something that I, I loved. So it was one of the first events that I did in track and field, and I just continued to long jump. And I took one year, I think, yeah, in 2015, I didn't long jump, and I just focused on sprints. And then in the back of my mind, I wanted to come back to it. And so in 2016, when I I talked to my coach, and we finally decided, all right, let's start jumping again. And then I just started hitting new personal bests. I was like, let's go. I just, uh, I knew that that was an event that uh, I want to continue to do. And was there one meet where you realized, okay, I, I think I can get to the Paralympics here? Yeah, let me think. Um, I think it was my first, first meet jumping, and I realized that I hit a standard. 
Um, it was like a, I hit my B standard and I was like super excited about it. And my coach, my coach at the time, he was, he wasn't even excited. He was like, no, you can jump farther. And I was, I was like, but I just did this and it's a personal best. He's like, Trenton, you can jump farther. <laughs> and so I, uh, yeah, I kind of realized like, you know, sky's the limit with this event. And, um, I just fell in love with it even more and, uh, I just continued to progress. So you're the type of guy who, after you have the Paralympics in 2016, I'm guessing that all that did was fire you up, right? You, people could have come away from fourth place and gone, fourth place, man, I'm, I'm that close to the podium, and go, enough, I'm out. Or they can go, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I know yeah. that there's a lot more for me here. Yeah, that's how I felt. I felt like uh, this was just a, a little taste, man. It was like when you go to Costco and you get a sample and you're like, oh, dude. I'm ready to buy in bulk. So I went all in <laughs> and I was like, let me just focus on this. And so then going all in is moving to the Olympic Training Center and basically being living and breathing every single day, your goal of, of getting to Tokyo. Yep. Yep. Just about. And how has this year been where you were all fired up for 2020 and COVID hits and all of a sudden there's no races, there's no Olymp no Paralympics. You don't know what's going to happen. It's the late a year. How did you deal with that? Um, so I just focused on what I could. Um, immediately, I, I went back up to Orange County and I started training with old coaches. And, uh, you know, I used facilities that were open that I could go train at. And so for me, I wanted to take advantage of it where I thought, you know, I don't know what my competition is doing, but the grind's not going to stop. And so I just continued to work really hard and I was progressing and I was getting really good. I felt really fit. And then I injured my back. Oh. Yeah, and I had like arrested for like a month and it didn't get better. And so I found out that I had a herniated disc and I had to go through a bunch of rehab. So for me, um, I had assumed that it was, that I'd probably hurt my back because I was dealing with a lot of sciatica in 2018 and 19. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I got an MRI and I realized that this was all during that pandemic or like the start of it, for me, I was like, okay, I got to focus on what I control and I, I need to use this time to rehab and be ready to go for next season. Mm -hmm. And so it was a blessing in disguise because had Tokyo been in 2020, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened. So um, I, I, for me personally, I felt like it was a blessing in disguise and, and a lot of, uh, it was definitely adversity. I, I went through a lot of adversity, but um, I, I think it built my character and, it was kind of like, how bad do you really want it? Because no one's keeping you accountable right now. What has CAF meant to you? Man, a uh, great opportunity. Um, helping me uh, for this year traveling. Um, so like the, the stipend that you guys or the, the grant that you guys offer is helping me a lot for traveling mm -hmm. to nationals. So with the pandemic and everything that was going on, a lot of the sponsors or uh, the revenue that I was getting in and outside of track and field diminished and uh, CAF provided a great opportunity for me to still um, financially afford to go compete at nationals and uh, you know go make the team for Tokyo. So you have uh, the trials coming up yeah and is this the type of thing where you know already you're on the team you what do you have to do there to make the team man nothing's guaranteed in track and field so i need to go out there and i need to place top three and i also have to hit a standard so ideally i want to jump over a standard because then you're an automatic qualifier right because they take a standards and then they go down to the closest to a standard which is you know above a b standard maybe not a standard but you go down the list to fill all the slots and you sit in a room on the last day after all the events are done and it's like a roll call for people that made the team you're just sitting there sweating waiting to hear your, your name called how are you a different athlete now than you were when you went through your first paralympics more mature for sure um, i've been through a lot of uh, trials and adversity um, more wisdom as well you know studying long jump specifically I've, I've been a student of my sport um, before Rio and then uh, you know it just kind of I embraced it more after Rio and I, I really want to study and learn more so 
Um, I've learned a lot more about my event. I've learned a lot more about mentally how to prepare and control arousal for competition. Um, and when things don't go the way that I planned, uh, you know, I've learned to just focus on what I can control and give my best. So you're rooming with one of my favorite guys, yeah. Justin Fonseva. Yeah, I love <laughs> I that. I didn't know kid. he was one of your favorites. I, I love. He, I just like what he represents, the fact that he had a horrific injury like you did. And yeah. just like you, you just dove right back in where you can sit back and feel sorry for yourself or you can just go for it. Yeah. Well, what have you gained from, from rooming with, with Justin? <laughs> um, some money in the stock market. <laughs> oh, he knows his stuff, huh? Justin and I started... Um, doing swing trades, options, and day trading as a way to make some more money um, outside of training. So yes. we've been waking up really early and we've been feeding off of each other. We got a big whiteboard, all these trades on there. We, we signed up for courses and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's just one side, but yeah, it's been really, really fun uh, to continue to bounce financial ideas off of him because yes. now he's an accountant. Yeah, And so with him, it's been, it's been really, really awesome because there was a lot of more, a lot of areas that I could relate to him outside of athletics. And one of those was finances and like mm -hmm. investing purposes. So that was one thing immediately that came to my mind as uh, something that we grew um, and bonded over was uh, kind of that side hustle of trying to make some money outside of athletics. And uh, yeah, he's, he's just a funny guy. It's, I was telling you earlier, there's very few dull moments with him. Yes. Um, so it's, it's been great because I haven't had a roommate since 2015. And to go back into a dorm style living and be and being in a suite with him has been uh, it's been a lot of laughs for sure. <laughs> what would it mean to you to make your second Paralympic team? A huge blessing. Um, it would uh, I would be very very thankful and um, I would yeah I I don't know I mean this has been a it's been a very very tough journey for me personally like yeah. a lot of emotional. Uh, stress a lot of financial and a lot of physical stress too so to me um, to make my team i would be very honored to represent my country mm -hmm. and it would just kind of fuel that that fire to get ready to go compete in tokyo and uh, put usa on my chest and represent us what's been the lowest point in terms of this journey for you <laughs> man <laughs> that's a that's a uh, that's a that's a deep one man um, there, uh, I mean, physical injuries has been one of those. That's been a tough one, uh, which I think most people can relate to. Um, I had someone in my life that I trusted really, really close to my heart and who was working with me. Um, and he was managing a lot of my personal life and I had, uh, um, a lot of, uh, trust in him and and he abused that trust and took advantage of my finances as well so that was those are probably the two two yeah. things that uh made me uh feel like this is one of the toughest times of my life in the past year but you've come out of it stronger absolutely dude man everything i've been through um i've just seen that uh that if you persevere you focus on doing what you can every day day in day out um you know, going through a day and it, it looks like, you know, nothing's changing, but you look back and it's like everything has changed. Yes. And I, I really believe that those are character building moments and it, it sucks to go through. But those experiences I have, I really believe that are going to be used to help other people in the future. Mm -hmm. And I really want that to, to be the case. I love it. Trenton, thanks so much for taking time. Man. <laughs> a pleasure to chat with you again. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's been fun. I can't wait to see you in Tokyo ripping yeah, it up. Yeah, let's hey, what, go. What's your longest jump? What's a further jump? Dude, I just hit a new PB on um, this last weekend out of my alum uh, at Azusa Pacific University. It was a little bit wind aided, so it doesn't count on the world rankings list, um, but it was 765 meters. So I'm in the 25 foot club and I'm looking 25 to. 25 feet? Yeah. Wow. Let's go, man. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. Love so it. I'm, I'm working my way up there. Trenton Merrill has been our guest, everybody. Again, special edition of CF's Heroes of Sport. This is our road to Tokyo.